Hello, this is Sarah Soil Plant, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a potting up video, give you a couple of updates on what's been going on with me. But mostly, I just need these plants potted up. It is like the beginning of spring, like technically. We had a little bit of like freezing rain and snow, like mixed whatever today. But it was 61 degrees yesterday, so it's on the horizon. I can see spring, it's coming, but it's not quite here yet. But I figure this counts for spring and I definitely need to pot these plants up. So I figure, let's do it. The first one I'm gonna pot up is this poor Syngonium. I've been talking about putting this in a pot and getting it on a pole, and I'm finally doing it. So I need to figure out a pot for this to go in. It's in like a square four inch pot, and I'm thinking, like, I'll need to check the root system, but Syngoniums, the ones that I've potted up, tend to have a really, really big, healthy root system. So I'm thinking that one this size is going to work. This is not coming out easily, which I think is a good indication that the roots are nuts, but we shall see, we shall see. Maybe the soil is just really compacted. I don't wanna pull too hard. Here we go, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, but the roots do look pretty decent. It's not pot bound, but it's kind of like, it probably needed a repot anyway, even though it wasn't like insanely pot bound, but a little bit, a little bit. It's, it's gonna get an up potting no matter what, so I figure this is good. I do wanna add this pole to the pot as well. So between the roots needing a little bit more room and this being in there, I think this size pot is gonna work great. Ooh, or, or options. You could also do one of these pots and it's a little bit more vertical and it like, the lighter color could match with the frostiness. I think I really like that combo actually. So I am not gonna go with the plastic pot and I'm gonna go with the terracotta. Plus it's a little bit heavier. So when it gets a little top heavy, it's less likely to topple over between the ceramic and the soil. So I'm gonna gently loosen the soil and tell you about the week I've had. So as some of you may know, I bought a house, this house that I'm in. I bought it a few months ago um, in kind of the spring, summer of 2021. The housing market in the U.S. was, and I think is still, continues to be a little crazy where there's a lot of bidding wars, things like that. So I'm very happy I'm in this house and I'm lucky to have it. I've been slowly trying to fix my house and do little upgrades here or there. You know, I don't have a ton of money because I just bought this house and I haven't built up my savings to where it was before, but I wanted to still tackle some of these smaller projects. You know, those ones that like I could easily afford. One of the projects I had was my toilet that's in my basement. I have a little half bath down there and it just had water that was continuously running and I didn't know why. I replaced a few parts on it, but that didn't fix the problem. So I was like, you know what? Let me just hire a plumber to look at this and see if he could figure it out. It might be something easy, but I'd rather a professional do it because obviously the things that I knew how to do weren't solving the problem. I think I'm gonna put it right like that. And I know it's bending this way, but it's definitely like bent that way. So I'm hoping if I put it like this and kind of encourage it to grow upward, it'll kind of right itself. All right, most of the roots are in there, but I need like one or two scoops to pop it off. And I get dirt on my pants. Eh, of course I get dirt on my pants. There's enough soil along the top so when it settles, it's not sort of barren on the top up here. But also not so full that when you water it, it overflows. I've learned that the hard way. I've got my handy dandy rope here so I can tie a few little pieces, a few sections to the moss pole. Double twist action there. I'm not gonna do it too tight, of course, because I don't want it to snap on me. Ooh, maybe I have to do one more where it's just like really loose. Ooh, I think that'll be perfect. Lovely. It's a little wobbly, but it's not established yet. Ah! I think the watering will help it be a little more stable. And once like the roots hold on and like do their thing and anchor it. But for now, that's it. It looks very, you know, crooked and whatever, but it'll fix itself. All right, this next plant is one I haven't actually introduced you to yet, but this is a Facebook purchase and it's in moss right now. This is my Philodendron White Knight and it's in moss and I wanna put it in soil. So I am going to oh so gently try and pull this out. Okay, here we go, lovely. And then I will transplant it and put it in this little four inch pot. So yes, back to my story. Um, I had a very simple, plumbing job 
for a plumber who is experienced and is somebody that I had worked with before. I had him replace the tub drain because the one I had didn't seal and I love taking baths. So I wanted a tub drain that could actually seal so it would fill with water. And he did okay with that. It wasn't like the best job I've ever seen. I was just so happy that I could fill my tub with water that I was just, and he came on like a Sunday night. So I was like, I gave him a little slack for that. In retrospect, I shouldn't have, that should have been a warning, but hindsight is 2020. And for those who are like, was it a simple fix? Like you keep saying that, what does that mean? If you're familiar with toilet anatomy, what I needed him to replace was called a fill valve. It is the part that basically takes the water from the outside of the toilet, from the clean water supply line and pull it into the tank so that it can fill and then flush properly. So it's the fill valve is what he was replacing. So he replaces the fill valve, flushes it a few times. You know, I'm down there with him the entire time I'm with him. So at least to my knowledge, everything was going well. He finished the job, flushed the toilet a few times. It seemed to work just fine. And then he went on his merry way and I came back upstairs. Now the initial problem with this toilet was that it would run all the time. So you'd constantly hear running water. And I was sitting upstairs and I was actually watching a Twitch stream where I was headed on my computer, which was on my lap. And you know, it was, you know, taking my full attention and I'm watching it, I'm having fun, whatever. I pause it to use the restroom. I go to the restroom and I, after I flush, I hear running water. And I'm like, oh, it's not from here. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it must not have fixed the toilet. I can hear the toilet running. I should go downstairs. I round the corner to my basement and it's just water everywhere. And I panic, I freak out. I go all the way downstairs and I turn off the water, like the supply water to the toilet. And it is shooting out like the connector to the base of the tank like where it connects in the water supply line connects to the bottom of the tank, if that makes any sense. And it was just spraying horizontal all over my bathroom. There was one to two inches of water in my entire basement. It's, you know, not a teeny tiny basement. It's a good sized basement. My whole living room is finished down there. It's like old, but it's finished. All the carpet was saturated. The tile in my laundry room was saturated. Everything was just soaking wet. And I, it was a combination of like visceral panic, but also like, I need to fix this. It was such a weird sensation because I did not even have a full set, like panic attack, nothing until like days later. But in the moment, I'm just like, I need to fix this. So after shutting off the water and kind of walking around and doing like a basic assessment of everything, making sure like anything I can pull away from the water, like property, you know, I have boxes and stuff downstairs that I still haven't unpacked. I have a couch down there. I have my entire record collection and my stereo system. Um, I have just a bunch of random stuff downstairs. I have all of my paintings like sitting up against the wall. So it was an inch or two of water. It wasn't an insane amount. It wasn't like it was like up to my, you know, hip or anything. So I just made sure everything was out of the way of the water. I decided to call the plumber and be like, dude, there's water in my basement, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what to do. Help, help, help. And so he's like, what do you mean this happened? And he's just like trying to catch up to me, basically. He's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, I've never had this happen. You know, I've been a plumber for two years and this has never happened to me. And I'm like, great, but there's water now, like whatever. And so he does agree to come over and shop back all of the water on my basement. And he said, okay, I'll be there in 20 minutes. It was not 20 minutes, it was more like 45 minutes. But in that time, I call my absolute saint of a boyfriend and I tell him what's going on and I'm like, I'm doing what I can, but I need you to look up what I should do. Should I call insurance right now? Uh, should I try to get the plumber to handle it? All this stuff, like trying to figure out like how I should handle it. So he, he gets off the phone, blah, blah, blah. I'm pacing, I'm figuring stuff out. And he tells me later on, he's like, yes, you should call insurance. So I call insurance and I file a claim with the guy while he's on his way over. 
and then he hangs up and then I'm still texting the boyfriend and he's like do you want me over and I said yes all right that is it for that one so I will put over here the next one I want to work on is my Syngonium Chia Pens this poor leaf is going to die on me but that's okay I am going to take it out of the pot I'm suspect it needs a slightly bigger pot and I'm also going to put another pole it's not a pole like that but I want something to make it grow vertically so yeah when I'm on the phone with my insurance people the guy I get because I call like their you know 24-hour claim number and the guy I get is not an expert on homes he's, he's in their car division but I guess the home division was booked or like didn't have enough people to answer the phone so he's like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't know the like exact way I should do this, but I will at least open the claim for you and you can call in the morning to figure everything else out. And I'm like, great, thank you. And he walks me through stuff. I tell him everything. But yeah, that's all great. I tell the boyfriend I need him to come over just for like moral support, a second set of eyes, like anything, uh, because I was not in a good state. He comes over and he is shop vacing out the water with an actual like shop vac it was kind of like a beefier version of the ones you can buy residentially so it's not like professional water extracting equipment but he is trying to get all the water up he clears out the drains so that like water can get out and everything and he's just like working on it like for a little bit of timeline the repair work happened around like 3 30 4 o'clock and then i noticed the flooding at about 7 30. He came over around 8.15 and then he didn't leave until about 10 at night. All of these roots are stuck to the side of the pot, this poor plant. So I'm kind of slowly trying to like roll the roots off of the ceramic, which is proving to be more difficult than I thought it would be. I'm trying really hard not to like tear the roots off because this thing took so long to root. Oh my gosh, I feel like there is a ton of roots in the very, very bottom of this. Anyway, I'll keep slowly picking at this poor plant. I can feel just like mats of roots at the very, very bottom of this pot that just do not want to let go because there's chunks of it that don't want to let go of the pot. Come on, please. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Ooh, see? See? My finger senses were correct. This poor plant took forever to root and now it's just like so many roots. Just try and get some of this soil out. Not all of it, but like some of it out. And I could do a tall boy like that, but I feel like with the roots like that, it needs something wider at the base. Something like that maybe? Give it a little bit of like breathing room, figure itself out. I don't like how short this pot is. No, nope, that'll probably work, but I do need to make more soil because I do not have enough soil to fill that pot. All right, so I just made a new batch of soil and I need to remember where I left off. I believe I left off when he was over and cleaning the basement out, basically trying to take all the water out of the basement. Uh, so he did some work for a good, you know, maybe two hours or so, and then left a box fan and said, you should be good. So if you're somebody who's ever had the misfortune of having your basement flood, you will know that there's a thing that's supposed to take place during a flood in your basement called mitigation. It's kind of an insurance term, but basically it's making sure that your basement is rid of anything that was destroyed by the water that was in your basement. So he basically told me at different points of this process that everything should be fine and nothing should need to be replaced to which I said very early on, like while we we're on that phone call telling him what was going on, I told him, I'm like, no, the carpet is ruined. There is no salvaging the carpet. There's no way around it. He just kept insisting that I didn't need it. And I never really backed down from that position. I was like, uh, no, I'm, I need my carpet replaced. That's not really up for debate. All right, so that is this one. It definitely needs to be watered. It is also very wobbly but I will water it at the very end, basically after the video is done. So from here, I'm going to dump out the box and I will work on the next plant. The next one I'm gonna do is I have these lovely cuttings for a pothos. This is my jade pothos, you know, super basic plant, but I have a few friends who I think would definitely benefit from an easier plant like this. So I made some cuttings hoping to give it to them. So that is what this is for. And I think this one I'm gonna put in here, even though this is a little big for this, 
but I'm going to position it in such a way that a lot of the cuttings will kind of grow in the pot. That is the hope, because I think if I put this in a four inch pot, it's going to get crowded immediately. So I think I'm going to upsize a little bit. It's a potho, so I think I can get away with it. Normally I wouldn't do that, but for this one, I'm going to risk it. So after he left, he left me with a singular box fan of his to basically circulate air so that the floor is not wet anymore. Now, just walking around my basement, I was still getting like sopping wet sounds when I was walking on the carpet. It was not in any way, shape or form dry. Um, I kind of thought I'm like, well, this is just a first step to make sure that, you know, we're in the right area to like start doing like real mitigation efforts, uh, not what was actually done. I'm gonna untangle these roots a little bit so I can kind of plant them up in their own little sectors. Hey, look at this, that's so cute. It almost looks like a little animal or something. Anyway, this one did not root yet. So what I'm gonna do, kind of cut this into cuttings and then just put them in the soil since this one hasn't rooted yet, but all the other ones have. So the other ones are going to go in the pot and do their wonderful planty thing. But that one I'm going to put in a little bit differently. I don't really know how I want these arranged, but I feel like no matter how I put them, they're gonna be kind of like upside down. So I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna have it where the roots are pointed down and it'll figure itself out. It may not be the cutest right now, but it'll grow and I'll, it'll position itself in the right way eventually. Yeah, so this whole mess is just horrific. I messaged the guy the next day and I'm like, hey, let me know your insurance information so we can go through your insurance. Um, and he was like, yeah, I don't have insurance. And let me just say without any hesitation at all, if you are someone who is going to be hiring any sort of contractor for your house, plumber, electrician, anything like that, make sure they're licensed, make sure they have insurance. So as soon as I find out he is not insured, um, I am kind of in a mild panic because I'm like, oh, so now I'm on the hook for everything that happened to my house. But also just, you know, being a human, I didn't want to screw this guy over either because he, you know, has a family and all this kind of stuff. He lives in my neighborhood, so I don't want any sort of like weird drama or beef with someone who lives in my fairly small little nestled community. But also like if he doesn't help with the situation, it's going to be way more difficult and I have to go through insurance, right? And insurance means I have to pay the full deductible. It also means that my rates are gonna go up because anytime you do a claim with house homeowners insurance, it's going to go up. So I'm just like, oh, great, this is fantastic. Worst case scenario here. But he keeps insisting that he's gonna make things right, all that stuff, like he's gonna fix it. Like he'll pay for everything because the last thing he wants is for my insurance company to come after him, right? Now I'm going to shove all of these little cuttings into the pot just kind of shove them in the top there wherever I have an open spot so that they can take root and fill up the pot. I'll be sure to water that at the end as well. And I've got one more plant, which is my little Christmas cactus, which is slowly dying on me. It just can't get enough water. And I've heard that Christmas cactus like a more moisture retaining soil. So I'm hoping if I switch this out with something that's a little more moisture retaining, it will do better. Yeah, hopefully I have enough time to finish this story because that is just the beginning of what happened. That was just like the first day and a half. So I asked him if he does, he has no insurance, but he keeps saying he's going to make things right. Um, he keeps offering some like shady kind of things. And I didn't realize at the time they were shady when I was like, yeah, okay. Ooh, where's, my, where's my plant? Here it is. It has no roots. So that is why it's dying. Okay. It did not root in this soil. And this is not super airy soil either. What can I do about this? All right, so I put it in a little shot glass to give it, you know, hopefully some time to root, but I need to find another plant to pot. So I may lose that Christmas cactus if it hasn't rooted yet, because I got that around Christmas time and it's still not rooted. So it may not be long for this world, but I do have a connection. My dad is actually the one who gave me that from his plant. Um, in the interim, I am actually going to plant up my Wars Goweskii. 
Um, I want to put it in my Lacusa pot. I do have more pond to use, but I've been meaning to put this in a pot like that. I feel like this leaf has been kind of crusty and musty for a while, and this one stayed okay. I haven't had a new leaf in a minute, so I wonder if changing out the substrate will help out a little bit. So basically, he's offering some sort of like deal to work on the side of insurance, which is not uh, legal, or at least like not allowed, but I couldn't get a right or wrong answer whether or not what he was offering was legal or not, so I will just keep that to myself because I don't want to accuse anybody of anything. But either way, he was being really sketchy and he kept telling me that he wanted to make things right, he wanted to make things right, and so he was like, hey, I will offer to pay to replace your carpet since you think you need new carpet. And I was like, okay, well, I think between like the damage to the drywall, the flooring in my bathroom and the carpet, if you just give me like three grand, I think that would cover everything. And he was like, basically, no, the damage isn't worth three grand. I will give you a grand. No, cause like, that's not how that works. And he kept, you know, I kept saying like, dude, you can give me three grand to replace everything or like, you know, I, I don't know, a thousand is not enough to replace everything. And he's like, oh, well, I could do it for a thousand dollars. And I'm like, I don't trust you in my house anymore. I, you were never getting into my house ever again after this. This was a pretty simple job that you screwed up. All the while during this conversation, he is just epically gaslighting me. And I don't use that term loosely. Trust me, I have been gaslit in relationships before. It is not a fun situation. But luckily for me, because I've been in those situations before, I knew right away that he was being entirely unreasonable during this whole conversation. He was telling me that by flooding my basement, he improved it because my basement was so ugly and terrible that you know, him removing the carpet and replacing it is more than enough to improve the station of my basement, which is not true. Like, I'm sorry. I am a woman living on my own and able to afford a house in what I consider a lovely, quiet neighborhood. Like, the fact that he wants to just take a giant just dump on how I keep my house and what the quality of my house is is entirely gaslighty. It's like basically saying that replacing the carpet alone, like without doing any of the wet miti like mi mitigation stuff to dry out my basement officially, anything like that, is just like unreasonable, unreasonable for me to ask, right? And this whole time he's writing me like paragraphs, like just screaming at me, telling me that I'm like, trying to get insurance to buy me a new basement and all this stuff. And I'm like, sir, I didn't want my basement flooded. This is not what I wanted to happen. So I don't know why you're yelling at me for this. It is entirely inappropriate. And after yelling at me for, with me being like fairly calm responses back, he's like, I didn't do any damage to your drywall. And then I showed him a picture of my drywall literally buckling from the humidity. He's like, oh, that's not from this. And I'm like, then what is it from? It wasn't like that yesterday and it's like it today. What do you think I did? Pour a bucket of water on the wall? Like what, what are you implying here? So anyway, after basically him yelling at me for a while, he basically took an entire 180. He, you could tell that he stopped talking to me for about a half an hour and then turned around and was like, you know, I'm worried about our professional relationship. I honestly think that you know, we can get your carpet replaced. I think it will be fine. And I'm like, okay, after yelling at me for, you know, an hour, like now you're just like cool, calm, collected, whatever. And he kept saying he was gonna ask his like contractor friends for advice and all this stuff. I'm like, did your contractor friends not advise you to have insurance? Like, maybe you should do that. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take forever. Come on. So anyway, the guy finally decides to stop screaming at me, whatever caused him to change his mind, but he decided to stop screaming at me about how terrible my basement is and how I'd be lucky to get $1,000 out of him. He finally agreed to let me choose my own contractor to pull up all of the flooring, replace it, and then also swap out the drywall. But like, also keep in mind, the only reason this is happening is because he refused to give me 
what I considered was a fair offer of $3,000, which I would have taken and basically did some of the manual labor myself and then had a professional install once I've removed everything and dried everything out, which spoiler alert, it would have cost so much more than that, even without other complications that came into play later on. Like I got two quotes just for installing carpeting, just installing it. And it was $1,700 for the cheapest one with the cheapest carpet they had in the store. And the quote I received for the drywall just in the bathroom, nothing else, nothing about removal. So this was just carpet and drywall in the bathroom. It was not the flooring in the bathroom or in the laundry room. And it ended up being over $3,000 just for those two out of the four things that needed fixed. So he would have had a huge deal and gotten away with a million things if he just gave me the $3,000 I thought was a reasonable ask for the damage that he did to my house. So anyway, after I get the second quote on the flooring and I realize how expensive this is gonna be, and I'm telling the flooring guy, I'm telling him all about how like, you know, he's been, you know, terrible about it and how I refuse to pay up front for this and he has to pay up front. I am not gonna rely on him to reimburse me for any of these projects. And the guy's like, you know, based on what you're telling me and based on how I've dealt with contractors in the past when they've done stuff like this to clients, they are gonna nickel and dime you for every single little thing. They are going to drag their feet when it comes to paying anything. Like you are gonna have a fight on your hands the entire way through. Plus, as I was thinking about it more, I was like, okay, so what I'm ultimately trying to get from this guy is that I'm gonna put in a lot of time labor, stress, renting equipment to dehumidify the basement, do all of this work myself in order for him to not have to deal with my insurance company. And my insurance company, like it, I, it may be a draw for me where like, I'll get new stuff, sure, I'll get some stuff replaced, but it's gonna cost me so much to have this done. And that's what I was trying to avoid. But at the end of the day, how much was I putting in just to get less without it. So after the second quote from the floor people that you know that were talking about installing the carpet, so after I got a couple of quotes for the carpet, I decided to just check out what was under the carpet itself because all of these quotes were contingent on the fact that I was going to remove the carpet myself. And so I wanted to know how difficult the job would be, like how is it adhered to the floor, what's underneath it, all that kind of stuff. So I go home at the end of the day and I pull back a corner of the carpet and what I see is carpet that is glued onto asbestos tile. Now, for those who are unaware, asbestos tile was something they used prior to like the 1960s, at least in the US, and it is highly, highly toxic. It is very cancer causing and usually takes a lot of remediation. You know, some professionals, there's exact companies that specialize in removing asbestos tile. It is a big deal. Uh, no one will touch the stuff. Contractors will not touch the stuff. And so as soon as I saw that, I was like, you know what? Between this guy screaming at me, me worrying about him paying, me doing all of this work, for maybe him paying it when he was giving me grief about giving me $3,000 knowing full well that this is going to cost way more than $3,000 for all of this to get professionally done. Even with me removing it, I was like, there is no way he's going to pay this. He was obviously having money troubles. You know, he was complaining about paying for things and like how he has no money when he was doing my plumbing job. So I was like, okay, this guy is hard up whatever. Like, that's why he was trying to goat me out of paying for what needed to be paid for. So I'm like, this guy does not have the money for this. I can't deal with asbestos tile myself. I just have to go through insurance. So after that, I called insurance. I reopened the claim because I actually, when I opened the claim, I paused it so that I could work with him to see sort of how it was going, like see, see if we could make it work out on the side and not go through insurance at all. Um, so I ended up having insurance, you know, send somebody out to check everything out. So currently I have had in my basement for almost a week now, I have 
three gigantic dehumidifiers in my basement that are running 24 seven and they still do not have all of the moisture out of my basement. My bathroom walls are just like, they basically melted off with how much humidity there was. When they installed the machines, it was 99% humidity in my basement. I mean, great for plants, not so great for the construction of my house. You know, they're getting all of the tile tested to make sure if it's asbestos or not, they're like 99% sure it is, but I should be getting those results back tomorrow. And once all that is done, then, you know, it's all about extracting everything. But I'm going through insurance and I hope this guy isn't, you know, ruined because of this like I don't wish anybody to be ruined even though he was like a huge jerk to me like such a piece of garbage like how he was treating me like I still don't want like his family to starve you know but I just knew that I couldn't deal with all of that and that he was not going to be honest with me he was not going to give me a fair deal and that even if he wanted to you know do actual right by me I don't think he could have afforded it so it's going to be going through insurance, so I'm going to end up spending a ton of money on, you know, trying to get this all fixed and fixed the way I want to, because now that I'm going to be starting from a blank slate, like, I have to decide whether I want to do carpet or if I want to do vinyl or anything like that, and all these things cost more, so this is just a huge expense that I was not ready to pay for. I'm just so exhausted during this whole time, like, I was so stressed. I was not eating well. I My skin broke out like crazy. Like the makeup is doing a lot of heavy lifting because my skin looks terrible right now. So I'm sure the next question is like, well, well then why did you hire him? If, and why didn't you ask if he was insured? Um, I'm part of a community forum on Facebook, you know, different people who live in the area who can do different fixes to your house or whatever. And I found him on there and people highly recommended him because he was a local guy and, you know, he was fairly affordable and all that stuff. He wasn't cheap by any means, you know, a reasonable price for doing work. And he was always willing to come on weekends and Sundays and stuff like that. People liked him quite a bit and they, I found him through there. So yeah, I, I basically trusted people in my community and I didn't verify if he was licensed or not. When I hired electricians, for example, I knew that they needed to be licensed and accredited and all that kind of stuff. So I did ask them. And I've asked other people who have had work on the house. It's just for some reason, because I, where I found him and everyone recommended him and he was so willing to work with me. Because at the time when I called him, I needed that tub drain replaced. I tried to do it myself and it just like didn't go. And then I couldn't take a shower in there for a few days. So I was like, I need somebody to come fix this. And everybody else was like two, three days. And he was like, oh, I can come tonight. So I didn't even, I was so happy that he was able to come out and fix it. And he did, you know, fix it, even though it's not the cutest thing in the world, he did fix it. So I definitely let my guard down and I highly regret it. Everything's going to work out. I want everything in my basement done the right way. I am not willing to cut corners for freaking anybody or anything. I'm not asking, you know, I don't want a brand new basement as he kept saying I wanted. I'm like, no, I want my basement the way it was before you flooded it, sir. I'm making progress, but I've got this one knot right here that I'm just slowly, slowly trying to pick away at, but it's going to take a little bit for this to, you know, finally work. And I'm pretty much done with my story for the most part. But moral of the story, if you haven't picked up on it yet, is make sure anybody who touches your house has insurance. Because what would have happened is I would have called his insurance that he pays for, you know, to be a contractor in somebody's house. So if he messes up like that, his insurance rate will go up and he has to pay his deductible for his insurance, but his insurance would have done all of the fixing and it wouldn't have cost me a dime. In theory, in theory, who knows? But that is kind of how it's supposed to work. I certainly learned my lesson. This is a like young person, new homeowner issue. I'm sure there's people who are, you know, yelling at me behind their screens and basically saying like, you should have known better, like this is basic stuff. Please understand that not everybody knows this kind of thing. And hopefully other people learn from my experience. But like growing up, I lived in a house where 
we didn't have a ton of money, so we would actually DIY everything in my house. We replaced the siding in our house. We finished the basement in our house. And I say we, it was mainly my parents doing it, my dad specifically doing most of the work. Like, I don't even remember a time where anybody was hired out, like a contractor was hired to fix anything or update anything. He put in tile, he put in wallpaper, like all this stuff, like everything that was ever worked on in that house that I remember was always done ourselves. So I never experienced like hiring out a contractor to do like redo a bathroom or something. Like I've never had that happen. I wasn't familiar with that whole process. Yeah, I think I've got pretty much all of the big chunks out anyway. Of course, there's a ton of spag sticking to the roots, but I think I've read that it's okay to leave that on there when you're putting it in LECA. Hope not, because I'm about to put you in LECA. At least I know now that the root system is really nice and healthy. Like, there's literally no rot. It's super happy and healthy. All right, so I put a little bit of the LECA in the bottom, and then I'm going to backfill. Lekka. I'll definitely need a little bit more, but it is covering the roots for the most part. So I think we might be okay. I just might need a little bit more Lekka to kind of balance it. And ta-da! Hopefully I didn't screw things up too badly and that it'll be a nice, happy, healthy plant. That's always the goal, right? Thanks for hanging out with me and watching me pot up some plants and hearing my terrible story. But yeah, that is why I did not post a video last week. I was insanely stressed out about the whole situation. But at this point, I think it's smooth sailing going forward, no matter if I've got asbestos tile or not. Like, it's moving forward. It will be fine. It's all going through insurance. So at the very least, I know, like, nothing bad should happen. It'll cost money in the end, but at the end, money is just money. Um, I did end up selling a bunch of plants in order to help curb some of the cost of, that all this is going to cost, mostly duplicate plants and things that I was looking to get rid of anyway. You kind of do what you got to do in situations like this. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me, and I will catch you next time. Bye!